Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing James Potter, the Potter family ancestry, and one of the Deathly Hallows. More specifically, we're going to be discussing one hallow in particular, the Invisibility Cloak. Now, the Invisibility Cloak, if you were previously unaware, is a powerful magical artifact that once belonged to Ignotus Peveril, the youngest brother from the tale of three brothers, a story outlining the origin of each hallow. The plot surrounds the three wizard brothers and their ability to cheat death for a short period of time. After conquering death, a personification of death, under the guise of congratulating them, awards them with three gifts, the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Invisibility Cloak. Long story short, each brother chose one of the gifts that death had presented them. Ignotus, the youngest, chose the Invisibility Cloak, Cadmus, the middle brother, chose the Resurrection Stone, and Antioch, the eldest, chose the Elder Wand. From the tale of three brothers. There were once three brothers who were traveling along a lonely, winding road at twilight. In time, the brothers reached a river, too deep to wade through and too dangerous to swim across. However, these brothers were learned in the magical arts, and so they simply waved their wands and made a bridge appear across the treacherous water. They were halfway across it when they found their path blocked by a hooded figure. And Death spoke to them. He was angry that he had been cheated out of three new victims. Four travelers usually drowned in the river, but Death was cunning. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers upon their magic and said that each had earned a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. However, after encountering Death the first time, it didn't take long for both the eldest brother who acquired the Elder Wand and the middle brother who acquired the Resurrection Stone, to meet death again. The two older brothers had made foolish, unwise decisions that led to their reunion with death, and ultimately their demise. The youngest brother was certainly the wisest of the bunch. And then, death asked the third and youngest brother what he would like. The youngest brother was the humblest, and also the wisest of the brothers, and he did not trust death. So he asked for something that would enable him to go forth from that place without being followed by death, and death, most unwillingly, handed over his own cloak of invisibility. All three of these objects are massively instrumental in the Harry Potter story, and while the Elder Wand is a huge plot driver, the invisibility cloak definitely ended up being the most useful hallow for Harry, which is interesting because it was handed down to him by his father. After James's death, it was kept safe until Harry was old enough to appreciate it. Dumbledore anonymously gifted the cloak to Harry in the Philosopher's Stone. His next present also contained candy, a large box of chocolate frogs from Hermione. This left only one parcel. Harry picked it up and felt it. It was very light. He unwrapped it. Something fluid and silvery grey went slithering to the floor where it lay in gleaming folds. Ron gasped. I've heard of those, he said in a hushed voice dropping the box of every flavor beans he'd gotten from Hermione. If that's what I think it is, they're really rare and really valuable. What is it? Harry picked the shining, silvery cloth off the floor. It was strange to the touch, like water woven into material. It's an invisibility cloak, said Ron, a look of awe on his face. I'm sure it is. Try it on. Harry threw the cloak around his shoulders and Ron gave a yell. It is. Look down. Harry looked down at his feet, but they were gone. He dashed to the mirror. Sure enough, his reflection looked back at him, just his head suspended in midair, his body completely invisible. He pulled the cloak over his head, and his reflection vanished completely. There's a note, said Ron suddenly. A note fell out of it. Harry pulled off the cloak and seized the letter. Written in narrow, loopy writing he had never seen before, with the following words. Your father left this in my possession before he died. It is time it was returned to you. Use it well. A very Merry Christmas to you. There was no signature. Harry stared at the note. Ron was admiring the cloak. I'd give anything for one of these, he said. Anything. What's the matter? Nothing, said Harry. He felt very strange. Who had sent the cloak? Had it really once belonged to his father? And the answer to Harry's question there is, of course it belonged to his father. But... How did James Potter get his hands on one of the fabled Deathly Hallows, the magical item purported to have once been in the hands of Death himself? As it turns out, 
the magical item simply came into his possession via natural inheritance. Pottermore explains the Potter family and the passing down of the cloak. The wizarding family of Potters descends from 12th century wizard Linford of Stinchcombe, a locally well-beloved and eccentric man, whose nickname, the Potterer, became corrupted in time to Potter. Linford's eldest son, Hardwin, married a beautiful young witch by the name of Iolanthe Peveril, who came from the village of Godric's Hollow. She was the granddaughter of Ignotus Peveril. In the absence of male heirs, she, the eldest of her generation, had inherited her grandfather's invisibility cloak. It was, Iolanthe explained to Hardwin, a tradition in her family that the possession of this cloak remained a secret, and her new husband respected her wishes. From this time on, the cloak was handed down to the eldest in each new generation. The Potters continued to marry their neighbours, occasionally muggles, and to live in the west of England, for several generations, each one adding to the family coffers by their hard work and, it must be said, by the quiet brand of ingenuity that had characterised their forebear, Linfred. Henry Potter, who was a direct descendant of Hardwin and Iolanthe, served on the Wizengamot from 1913 to 1921. Henry's son was called Fleamont Potter. It was Fleamont who took the family gold and quadrupled it by creating magical Sleek Easy's hair potion. Two drops tames even the most bothersome Barnet. He sold the company at fast profit when he retired, but no amount of riches could compensate him or his wife Euphemia for their childlessness. They had quite given up hope of a son or daughter when, to their shock and surprise, Euphemia found that she was pregnant and their beloved boy James was born. Fleamont and Euphemia lived long enough to see James marry a muggle-born girl called Lily Evans, but not to meet their grandson, Harry. Dragonpox carried them off within days of each other due to their advanced age, and James Potter then inherited Ignotus Peveril's invisibility cloak. Dumbledore, who was privy to the cloak's existence, also explains the origins of the cloak to Harry. The cloak, as you know now, travelled down through the ages, father to son, mother to daughter, right down to Ignotus's last living descendant, who was born, as Ignotus was, in the village of Godric's Hollow. Dumbledore smiled at Harry. Me? You. You have guessed. I know. Why the cloak was in my possession on the night your parents died. James had showed it to me just a few days previously. And that's it for this video. Hopefully that clears up any questions about the existence of the cloak and how it came into the possession of Harry's father, James. Until next time, remember, if you want to know what a man's like, take a good look at how he treats his inferiors, not his equals.